Greetings, fellow Ambazonians. Today, na Monday, number 15 day for this first month for the year of 2024. My name na Kapo Daniel, wuna own countryman, sense pass king, Mr. No Koni, wuna welcome to our daily podcast, a program where they bring una the truth, it they bring una meaningful information, fact-based analysis for help we as we work out for this journey to our freedom to the independence of Ambazonia. Our good people across the globe, those incarcerated in concentration camps, our refugees and IDPs are bringing on all revolutionary greetings. We go start today with good and positive note where they come out from the great city of Bamenda, land of the brave the capital of resistance of Ambazonia. Our dark forces them, they then launch a brave, brazen attack for Insa Bamenda around New Road, opposite Amumezam, targeting a Cameroon military checkpoint. Those were the sound as our forces demonstrate power and send a powerful message to the enemy that La Republic du Cameroon will not mount our streets on challenge and they will do so at the cost. Also in Bamenda in Quen, our brave forces from the Bafut 7 Qatar launched an operation to reinforce the ghost town on this Monday morning. Today Monday the 15th of January, I sent a police live. Now Quen funny starts with that. Yes. Now I sent a police live Monday the 15th. Our place frying, frying. Nobody, eh? Frying, frying. Our forces of the seven Qatar mount a roadblock, burning one bike that was disobeying the ghost town, arrested several people who attempted to open their shop in Quen, sending a message to our entire Quen neighborhood, especially to our Francophone brothers. Do not attempt to sabotage Monday ghost town. It is sacrosanct. It is the only day left for our population to demonstrate civilly by staying at home, closing their shop, parking their Benzikin and commercial vehicles and private vehicles at home to demonstrate to the world that something is going on wrong. We don't want Cameroon rule over us. We want Cameroon to go away. The resistance continue and it will continue to intensify. Ambazonian forces across our national territory must take measures to reinforce Ghost Town Day on every Monday and prevent saboteurs. Nobody for their own individual interest should sabotage or open their shop on Monday, which is the only day our people can demonstrate their grievances and express their aspiration to become a free people. Fellow Ambazonians, yesterday we then put out a video message also for inform our population Say big number, General Efang Ide alive. General Efang, the message say if you don't die, if you come out, na for you come, where it be been as a result of a medical episode, where it be happen, where the soldier they be fee say he don't die, but General Efang Ide alive, and will be very happy for get this good news, na a very good news, it be completely devastate our heart. Say a big general like that, it be fall. Nevertheless, the underlining issue them still day. The main core for the ADF mother base for General Efang it will be ambush, and so several soldiers then be lost their life as a result of that ambush. That attack where he almost killed General Efang, and he still gets some soldiers then where they still be injured. It then show we the extent where extremism, hardline, and crimes within our liberation struggle it then destroy our struggle. For the past one year since I resigned for the ADF, Ayabacho unleashed a series of hardline and extremist view where it had left to destroy our struggle. They then assassinate individuals for Bamenda in the name of targeting Francophones, kill people then for Gozang, the murder of the two people in Gozang, which is directly linked to Ayabacho, Lucas Asu, who came out to claim to support and instigate and justify that killing. 
have eventually led to the ambush of the murder base of Hawaii of the ADF that caused the death of several soldiers, the loss of their main primary weapons to the enemy. Those are all consequences of extremism and hardline that will only compromise the security of our forces. We thank God that General Efang is alive, but the underlining things that have led to the destruction of his security and the security of many Amazonian soldiers on ground zero. Committing murder will not go unpunished. I want to remind our people, the time we had a, a, a meeting with uh, Sesekwa Yoktabi and a team for prison, the first conclusion we make um, for that first meeting was that those people responsible for the murder of our forces in Bui must be held accountable even after the war is over. Any person from Ambazonia will then kill another general, another soldier, without any justification or threat to their life, will be held accountable. Even after their death, their judgment will come, the cases will be tried for justice for those soldiers who have died, including those who are killing our innocent civilian, claiming to try to fight for the struggle or become strong men. Ayabache, Lucas Asu, and any of their supporters should know that the people they murdered in Chia Street, eight of them, will, they will answer for those deaths. The two innocent people that were slaughtered in Gozang, they will answer for those murder. Those murder have led to the destruction of Ambazonia. It led to the conversion of General Savior into a weapon of La Republic. They have completely destroyed Batibu, brought La Republic to Cameroon into Ashon, and today Hawaii is no more. The mother base of ADF has evaporated because of all this stupidity that have led to the compromise of our liberation struggle. Since Ayabacho's hardline was unleashed by my resignation, ask yourself how many Ambazonian soldiers have died. Today, every Tom and Jig is going around in our city harassing people for liberation tax a policy that was supposed to target big businesses and foreign investment in our territory have been used against our own people. People in Fubamenda, even within the ADF, they, they call me today, they, they ask and say, for who said they, they keep all the money? Because the ADF, them for diaspora, the egg of sea, no man no know who said they, they collect that money, it go. Over 80 million than be collected for Bamenda alone. The ADF forces in Bamenda, they are calling and asking what is really happening. For Ntanka, they collect money, they detox it, it go off for one account. For Batibo, for Allah, they detox it, it go for one account. Now, who they hold that account? Now, who they hold the money? When they collect tax, they get the treasury. Now, who they keep all those money? Where money down goes to over 80 million. They need no place where they go. They need to see the weapon the way they buy them. They know know the person where go account for. They only collect now for collect money. All garage people, them, they don't pay. They need to pay in a certain like them. They need to pay in threat. And nobody said they did take and collect support. All people they didn't get store them, they don't pay. All man for quarter, they don't pay, they ask and say, Who's all that money did they go? Because the boy, the way they collect that money, they never see the way they can fight La Republic. Today, we see seven Qatar, they go block road for up Nkwende, for Corner Palace, for Senna Jess. The Ambazonian Dark Forces, they don't go attack for opposite New Road for Amumezande. The people, the way they collect tax, they keep the money for Usai, they buy now which gun because people for Bamenda, they need to know which way they do with that money. Now, say that it's poor struggle, it go. We know if they fight La Republic, say they be the thief money them, they get parliament where they don't know Usai budget, they come out, how much they enter, how much they go. They collect money for Sonera, they need to know Usai, they go, people they take and enrich themselves. We cannot allow the same thing in Ambazonia, thinking we are fighting against La Republic and we are fighting against freedom. We can remember that my trip to Boya was the highest candor that destroyed our liberation struggle in the diaspora. Today, we are seeing the same in the ground zero. The liberation tax have become the biggest scam that is going to destroy our people. People need to support our struggle. But if you need to collect money collectively in the name of Ambazonia, you must account for that money. When soldiers are giving information about other soldiers, building houses in sacred places, buying farms, and becoming the next billionaire in town without any action to show our people are not happy. That is how you spoil a struggle. 
those who sit in the diaspora trying to give this blank check hoping that they are going to have loyalty they must understand that they are taking away the the, the protection of the soldiers themselves our soldiers are being protected by our own people because they believe they are fighting for them they are fighting for a just cost but when they start to see people extorting individuals because of liberation tax then you take away that legitimacy of forces and you expose our forces to the enemy's propaganda and intelligence gathering mechanism nevertheless we we'll continue to encourage all our people to continue to support our forces and be patriotic be patriotic yes we must criticize but be patriotic the diaspora some individuals will always take decisions because they want to become relevant they want to be the main people that they are talking about they don't care the impact on the ground they don't care how many soldiers will die as a result they just want to be relevant and seen as strong men but we must carry on with our liberation struggle while putting them in their rightful places in history one thing i can guarantee you criminals murderers will never save ambazonia corrupt individuals will never lead us anywhere scammers and impostors who are pretending to be things they are not would destroy our struggle we then get several inquiries about how the ambazonian people's right advocative platform they intend for push their agenda for devolution will it receive the necessary support how would they get cameroon to comply well my people we do not rely on cameroon cameroon is not trustworthy yesterday it is not trustworthy today it will not be trustworthy tomorrow we intend to work with our international partner and do hard work in diplomacy within the shortest period of time to gain international support and recognition for the alternative solution to help our people stop the war alleviate the pain of war and guarantee independence in the future and evade and avoid the immediate total loss scenario that we see on ground zero the enemy is bent to keep the status quo for the war to continue you can look at kuniam titus their war criminal the worst human being on earth a person that we must make sure we chest even after this war you can see him continue his mockery on the pain our people are suffering and even on the prospect of peace la republic don't want peace they don't want negotiation they don't even want ambazonia to make any concession that will lead them to any sort of freedom because they want us to remain slave these are people who have justified the killing of innocent civilians for the sake of maintaining their ego over our people and their mockery for the identity of our people we must do the right thing not focusing on what the enemy is doing but focusing on the interests of our people and the livelihood of our people we guarantee ambazonians that we will and we are capable of amassing the critical support from the international community both in africa in the west and in key states that are required to bring la republic du cameroon into compliance and to make the necessary adjustment for ambazonia to obtain autonomy self rule and secure for our people a livelihood that is befitting of their blessing from god we will be putting out a series of speeches and presentation to present to our people the whole package of the devolution what we stand for our vision to resolve this crisis with la republic du cameroon with the devolution of la republic du cameroon that will secure ambazonian independence in the future if not in the present we are also going to correct some of the misconception our people have been hurt or fed by by loose canons of hardliners who are not in conformity with the african union and the european union there are some thing i want to draw our attention to so that our people can have the equipment to have the power that they say knowledge is power indeed they deserve to have this knowledge as well one of our consultant who is pushing for our agenda of devolution would want our people to be reminded that the african union will never recognize ambazonia as an independent state in 
when the African Union accepted Southern Sahara as a member or as a, as a state, it led to the withdrawal of Morocco, which completely overhauled any attempt by the African Union to recognize and accept Southern Sahara as a nation state or as a member of the international community. As a result, the African Union had lobbied Morocco for over 10 years to come back as a member within the African Union. Even in the best case scenario, if the African Union was to recognize Amazonia as a state, Cameroon might withdraw and it would lead to the same consequences to the African Union as Morocco did. Morocco only rejoined the African Union in 2017 after the African Union have assured them that Southern Sahel will never be recognized as a state. For the most part, Southern Sahel have a strong case as that of Ambazonia equally. Eritrea and Ethiopia lost a total of 900,000 fighting men for the fight for Eritreans to become an independent country. Somalia, Southern Somal Somaliland lost over 200,000 people for over 30 years to fight to become a self-governing territory by the use of force and it is still yet not recognized by the African Union. And the Somali government have said that they are determined to restructure their country, rebuild their military and go back to war with, so with uh, Somaliland no matter how long it takes. These are some of the challenges we should have in our mind. But the best case scenario, which we can see that relates to Ambazonia as well, is a fight for self-rule and independence of the Bongasville that took 20 years with over the death of over a million people from Bongaville. That conflict end up with a peace agreement that states that the people of the Bongaville can only ascend to independence through peaceful means that will start with them issuing or accepting a special status for self-governance and autonomy for over 20 years before the population will be given the right to have a referendum election to determine whether they truly want to become an independent part, an independent state. La Republique du Cameroon, I can say to the best part, have offered special status like an online thing. I call it online just to show you that it is a charade. It is a fake. It is a smoke skin. And they hope that our people will be stupid enough not to know how to use diplomatic maneuver to take advantage of that concessions they have made. They provoke us on a day-to-day -day basis thinking that as primitive and illiterate people, as statistics have shown, we are going to act like Zamzam and not take advantage of it. And the headlines amongst us are going to hold their guns without blinking to see Ambazonia end up in a total loss scenario. In all comparison in the entire war and the entire earth about people fighting for freedom and independence, Ambazonia is the worst case scenario in terms of our internal dynamic. We call each other working for La Republic, blackmail each other without any iota of evidence or shame. Ambazonia is a disgrace to liberation movements. Ambazonia history is a disgrace to freedom fighters. We have seen people who claim to be men of God become the most corrupt people who have embarrassed our people with scandals of embezzlement and extravagance with blood money collected for soldiers who were killed on ground zero. We have seen our brave soldiers killed by the Ambazonians. We have seen people who call themselves patriot and hardliners with history of fighting for Ambazonia, labeling each other treacherous names for the sake of political adventures. We have seen liberation movement transform into political party, conducting political campaign in Ambazonia. It is a shame and our people must recognize this reality that we have an Ambazonian problem and we must for self-preservation, put aside all this partisanship and rescue our people with an attainable solution that is going to preserve our independence, our dignity and sovereignty, save our population for a state of perpetual violence that we are going to end up like Mexico or a similar situation that happens in Sri Lanka. Our people must wise up. It is not possible any longer to have outright independence. That scenario is not possible. 
Nobody can fool you or pretend to show you any way that it can be possible. But it is possible for us to secure our independence in the future. Autonomy is the only way out for our population and for those who love our people, those who love our soldiers must join our campaign and vision for a devolution as a solution for Ambazunian independence. I continue to invite all Ambazunians to join us in this fight. We have the necessary capability. Our team is growing by the day. Our international engagement is robust. The results are highly positive and we will come out with a comprehensive package for a devolution offer that our people will align themselves and we will bring back peace in our homeland and we will bring justice to our people. As I said, not everybody is going to be on board. Those who have become drunk with the blood of innocent people, those who are extremists, those who are kidnappers, those who are murderers, have no place in the tables of the saint unless they repent. But this is the final solution for our people. And the time is now and the time is right. The time to abandon all those childish plays of fake accusations is over. The time for real hard work to defend our people and to free them and give them freedom. That time has come. Capo Daniel, looking out for you, signing off.